On today's show. I spent a lot of time in the Bible and then a lot of time reflecting, just hanging out with Jesus. He was filling in the voids and mending all those areas of my heart that had been broken. After 10 months of participation, he successfully completed the program. Now, 12 years drug-free, he says his feelings of fear have been replaced by God's unconditional love and forgiveness. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're really glad you joined us today. We have a really inspiring program today. Brian, it's great to see you, my friend. It is great to see you. And you know, Lori, we're moving along with summer and I'm enjoying the, uh, the, the warmer weather, but also, you know, realizing when you look at nature and you see the trees and you see all the, the, the birds and everything out you know, our theme today is never alone. And we are never alone when we begin to practice the presence of God. Do you have, Lori, a, a, an example or a situation where you remember you said, you know, I'm never alone? Well, I actually have a story, Brian, about my mother-in-law, um, Dean's mom, and she was on her last days in the hospital. And we would go in to see her and uh, visit with her. And we always felt so bad when we had to leave and just thinking of leaving her there alone in the, at night. And she said to us, I'm never alone. There's always someone sitting in that chair. And she pointed to the chair in the corner and she said, there's always someone there. And so I, we just know that that was the presence of, you know, the Lord Jesus, maybe her guardian angel, but... It was the presence of God with her. We are never alone. He is with us. What about you, Brian? Wow, you guys got me kind of choked up right there because I was thinking about my mother. And James Kelly, you know, with Faith Tech, he was talking about how they were helping loved ones during COVID. And uh, I remember getting giving my mom an iPhone. And, uh, you know, she didn't, she comes from the above 50 generation. So uh, not necessarily technology savvy. But we were able to to talk back and forth, and uh, and little did I know that she would be a trailblazer because I would officiate over her home going, and we would be having a Zoom moment. And you know, when I when I think about it, I say, God, you have such a sense of humor, because by not being there with her, now she's in heaven. But the technology that hasn't even been created by man, God is allowing us to connect in our hearts. So we are, you know, death can't kill what will not die. So uh, thank you. You just brought me back all the way <laughs> to a moment that yeah. I guess I'm still in. And uh, yes, But we've yes. got a powerful program today. Yeah, and it's so true that we are never alone. They were Jesus' last words to us before he left. I will never leave you or forsake you. So today, if you need to know that truth, please uh, watch the entire program and just, just really let the truth of this uh, resonate in your heart. Here's Marilyn's story. Mm -hmm. I lived in a little farmhouse out in Vineland, and it was viciously cold. And uh, the phone rang, and it was Bob. And he said, I I don't want you to talk. I want you to listen. I've left you. I have someone else. I don't love you anymore. I'm not coming home. Don't try to get a hold of me at work. Don't try to bother me. I'll contact you about my things. And I said, but Bob, I'm your wife. I love you. And he'd hung up. It was too late. I, I was just devastated. I was just totally devastated. And on Saturday, I turned on the television, and we didn't get very many stations out in Vineland, but we did get the 700 Club. And Pat was saying that no matter what happens in your life, that Jesus is real and he is there, and that there's so much power in prayer. And I thought, I'm going to call that number. I'm going to get prayer. So I dialed the number, and this little old lady came on. I said, my husband's left me, and I just need prayer. And she says, I'm going to pray a, real, a prayer you may not have heard before. And the voice that came over the phone wasn't the little old lady. It was a very powerful voice. And it said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come against you, Satan. I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
and I command you to take your claws out of this man this very day. I command you to loose him in Jesus' name. She says, and I pray that this very day that this man will call his wife and he will tell her he loves her. And he will, before this clock strikes midnight, he will get down on his knees and he will give his heart to Jesus. And I thought, thank you very much. So all day long I was praying and uh, finally about nine o'clock at night he phoned me and he said, Marilyn, uh, yes, and he says, I just want to tell you something. And I said, what? And he said, I love you. I do love you. He turned to me and he said, this might sound really weird, but um, before we talk, I think we should pray. And I took him through the sinner's prayer. And he said it. And, and I could hear him sobbing. And he cried and he cried and he cried. And I turned the light on and the tears were pouring down his face. And I hugged him and when I hugged him, I could see my watch and it was five minutes to So we talked about the Lord, and he said, I want to come home. I'm born again, you're born again, and uh, I want to live for the Lord. And I said, you know, I called the 700 Club last week. He said, you did, and I told him. I had a little old lady pray, and uh, she prayed you'd come back before midnight. And he said, oh, he says, we should phone her and thank her. And so I called that number. And a young man answered, and he said, Hello, this is Paul, 700 Club, can I help you? I said, a little old lady prayed for me last week, and, and her prayers were answered, and I want, we want to let her know. Well, what was her name? And I said, well, she didn't answer with a name. He said, are you sure we always answer with a name? I said, no, she just said 700 Club. He says, are you absolutely sure you phoned this number? I said, yes. And it was last Saturday. I said, yes. He said, hmm. That's very strange. We didn't have any little old ladies answering phones last Saturday. He said, not at all. And he said, I don't know who you were talking to, but they sure had a pipeline through to God. We were married a total of 21 years when he passed. And uh, he was very, very sick at the end. And he laid in bed and he, he thanked me. He thanked me for leading him to Jesus, and he said, my body is wasting away and my body is getting weaker, but my spirit is getting stronger. And uh, I know where he is, thanks to the 700 Club. <laughs>Wow. I mean, I'm just actually blown away by this story. It just it just made me laugh because I think, my goodness, there was no old lady there on the phone answering the phones at night. Like, surely I believe with Marilyn that that was an angel. I mean, look what happened in her marriage. Her husband comes with the Lord. It's just such a beautiful story. That is answered prayer. Do you know that the Ministry of 700 Club Canada is committed to praying and being there for you? We have 24-7 prayer lines, prayer partners waiting and ready to receive your call. Maybe you think, oh, I don't know if I could talk to someone or listen, pick up the phone, dial, and there'll be a safe person on the end of that phone to pray with you. And maybe it could be an angel. You never know. 1-855-759-0700. You know, a time in my life where I was desperate to know that God had heard my prayer, that uh, I needed some supernatural intervention God showed me verses from Daniel chapter 9, verses 21 to 23. Let me read them to you in the New Living Translation. It says, As I was praying, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the early vision, came swiftly to me at the time of the evening sacrifice. He explained to me, Daniel, I've come here to give you insight and understanding. The moment you began praying, a command was given, and now I am here to tell you what it was, for you are very precious to God. I mean, here's Daniel praying and this Gabriel, the archangel shows up like, by the way, Daniel, don't worry, we've heard your prayer, but we've been a little busy. We've been fighting a war in heaven, but we want you to know that you are very precious to God. I believe that's for someone today. Your prayers have been heard from the first time that you prayed. The heavenly armies have gathered and are fighting for you, even though you can't see it. 
and you are precious to God. You see, God is committed to answering our prayers. Sometimes he takes longer than we'd like, and sometimes he answers them in ways that we don't understand, but he always answers our prayer. Would you call today so that you can participate with God in whatever he wants to do in your circumstance? We're here for you. Give us a call. As a little boy, fear had become a daily part of life for Joseph, who lived with parents who were addicted to drugs and alcohol. My life at home as a young boy was chaotic, full of drugs, a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, a lot of physical abuse. When he was five, his mother was driving under the influence when she was involved in a devastating crash and suffered from a brain injury that caused memory loss. Joseph says that's when their relationship dissolved and rejection set in confusion, um, sadness, fear. She didn't recognize me at all. Um, she didn't even know she had a child. The physical abuse from his father continued until he was 11 years old. And as a teenager, he began looking for validation in all the wrong places. That's when I began to start doing drugs, um, medicating that pain of losing and feeling abandoned by my mother. I went and went to a rave um, in Atlanta and got it introduced to ecstasy and LSD. It stemmed from that into cocaine, and then that stemmed into meth and heroin. He spent the years of his early 20s in and out of prison for selling and using drugs. He would get clean while locked up, but once released, he was back to his old habits. Joseph was gaining money and attention from the drug cartel, but he was never completely satisfied. Yeah, the drug use, it took away the pain for the moment. While I was in that lifestyle, um, I really knew that nobody, everybody was out to get everybody else. And so I didn't trust anyone. At 28, he was robbed three times in a year, almost losing his life to the violence. He decided to walk away from it all in hopes of getting clean for good. That last time was really scary and they robbed me and handcuffed me and um, that was that moment where I'm like, I'm gonna die if I, don't, if I don't get out of here. I had chosen to leave that life and the only way I knew how to leave it was to just leave everything I own. I was homeless, so I left all my cars, boats, dogs, everything, and I just started walking the streets. He wandered for nearly six months without a home. One night, he was trying to rest in a school baseball dugout when he had an unexpected encounter. That night, the mosquitoes were terrible. I couldn't sleep, and I was really restless, and I sat up, and I just cried out to God. I said, God, why have you let all this happen to me? And immediately after I said that, Jesus appeared to me as a man. I mean, he just looked like a regular person. And he looked at me, and he said, I love you and have plans for you. And then he just disappeared. It felt like liquid love, like it just felt like Someone had hugged me so well and in such a sincere way that it, it set me free immediately. I just came to my senses and was like, all right, you have plans, I'm gonna follow you. I wanna see what these plans are. Experiencing God's love led him to get the help he needed for addiction, and he entered a faith-based recovery program. There, his heart continued to heal and he found his place as part of God's family. I spent a lot of time in the Bible and then a lot of time reflecting, just hanging out with Jesus. He was filling in the voids and mending all those areas of my heart that had been broken. After 10 months of participation, he successfully completed the program. Now, 12 years drug-free, he says his feelings of fear have been replaced by God's unconditional love and forgiveness. He's never left me. Like, he's so kind to me. He keeps me 
um, going in the right direction. Joseph is a devoted father and husband. He says the plans God showed him that night in the dugout are clear today. He is actively involved in church ministries and shares his story with others, passing on the joy that he's found through a real relationship with God. Give Jesus a try. He will not let you down. There's no place that you can be. There's no darkness. There's no bottom that he can't pick you up from. And he will change your life forever. And he did it for me. Wow. Joseph had to go through a a very challenging time before he came out of the other side of that. Did you hear what he says? Give Jesus a try. He will not let you down. There's no place that you can be. There's no darkness. There's no bottom that he can't pick you up from. He will change your life forever. He did it for me. Oh, wow. You know, when I look at um, that night that he spent in the dugout, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because when he was there and those mosquitoes were biting and he says, God, why is this happening to me? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? God didn't make that happen because he gave us something called free choice. And Joseph had free choice. And that's really what got him in trouble because he wanted to leave the game. And you know, they have something uh, in the game that says, don't hate the player, hate the game. Until you hate the game so much, that thing that you're experiencing right now, you will never come to the point where you realize you're at the end of yourself and the beginning of God. But when you cry out to him, it's a new day. I want to get that into your hands. It doesn't cost you anything. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. But I want to pray a prayer with you. And it's the same prayer that Joseph prayed. And God told him, I've got a plan for you. I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope, but I need you to do it my way. Doing it your way, chances of success, slim. Doing it God's way, high. Are you ready to make that choice? I won't embarrass you. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I'm sorry. I've sinned. I turn from doing things my way. I choose you. Come into my heart. Make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. Would you please give us a call and say, Pastor B, I prayed with you. Let's start that journey together. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. We'll be right back. They pretty much told us she had, you know, we had no hope that she was probably not gonna make it. They kept her on life support to harvest her organs. I mean, I, I hit the light. I stood up, I turned around, and there was Jesus. Finally, I belonged. This is where I belong. This, I was home. Coach Drew. Anxiety is not just something that happens in an isolated incident, right? It's a, it's a combination of a number of factors. So if you are burnt out, if you're overworked, if you're tired, um, if you haven't eaten well, right? If your body's not functioning optimally, if you're having relational challenges, if you're having challenges at work, all these things, uh, it's like it, it compounds itself and it makes you more susceptible to feeling anxious and having anxiety provoking thoughts and when we're younger it's like we wake up and we start a new day and it's fresh a new day is a new day i find the older that we get is the more yesterday matters right i used to wake up like samson and be like oh okay the stress of yesterday it's gone i you know i can move on now it takes me a few good weeks to recover after several months of going without you know, good self-care. So that can increase our level of anxiety and our level of stress. So a lot of people really can't tell the difference between anxiety and stress, but the difference is anxiety feels the same way as stress does in our body, but 
the anxiety is based on a negative picture of the future. And that's really one of the indicators to know that you're feeling anxious. It's because you're thinking negatively about the future. From a very uh, physiological standpoint, like I said before, our bodies, there's a compound of impact of stress in our lives. Our bodies can only handle so much. Not only are our spirits not meant to dwell in an environment of fear, but our bodies aren't meant to survive optimally in that. So if there are stressors that have been piling and piling and piling, it's important to address those stressors. And that can be anxiety producing when we imagine ourselves as unable to address those things, when we imagine them going poorly. Sometimes it's important to get help to learn to address those things or to learn to imagine us effectively addressing those things so we can bring our level of anxiety down. Now, it's very difficult to navigate through a situation when our bodies are worked up. And if you think about it just simply logically, this is the beauty of breathing. When we stop and we still ourselves and we learn to do that and we learn to take in good oxygen, that oxygen gets into our lungs and is filtered into our blood and is pumped to our brain so that we can actually think. If we're not breathing well, we're not going to think well. And it's important for us to be able to think. So one of the first things that you want to be able to do is learn to calm yourself, learn to be still. And we often, I find that many people, we are reactive, right? We wait till a situation happens and then we try to address it. Whereas even learning how to manage our emotions and our moods is something that we can do progressively. We can be proactive. You don't have to wait till you feel anxious to learn how to manage those things in your body. It's like preparing for a marathon. You don't want to wait till the day of the marathon to start training, right? So throughout the day, you can even set alarms, okay? Set an alarm to remind yourself to breathe. A lot of us hardworking people, we're, we're actually pretty anxious people. And we don't allow ourselves to take breaks. We don't allow ourselves to stop. We just go, 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 go. And nobody's responsible for that. Nobody is responsible for that but us. So taking breaks throughout the day, stopping, breathing, right? Some of the things that I do, like I said, I have scriptures posted on my wall, right? I have things visual visual reminders set alarms in my phone now i'm adjusting my schedule so there are breaks worked into my schedule so i can breathe i can relax and i can take better care of myself so that will help us with uh dealing with some of these anxiety attacks that we feel because it's all it's all related Well, the truth of today's show is loud and clear. You are never alone. And that was so good from Dr. Drew about ang anxiety. We can bring everything to the Lord, can't we, Brian? Because he is with us in all of it. 100% Lori. And you know, when we look at where we are, uh, we've got to understand that uh, this 
self-quarantine was not man's idea it was god's idea and i and we could either use this opportunity to recognize by not listening to the negative news but the good news that god will never leave us or forsake us all the days of our life you know we've got reinforcement with that because we've got some partner comments as well as some price reports Lori, what have you got over there well michelle uh, messaged us and said this brian I'm really enjoying your morning program. It gives me a sense of peace. Thank you. That's wonderful, Michelle. I just wanted to add on that because I don't. I want in on that one. We had Faye and she said, praying blessings on the ministry. I continue to thank God for this ministry and pray the Lord will continue to use you in all uh, winning souls for him and the kingdom. Go God. Wow. That's so great. Thank you, Faye. Well, Judy uh, said, God has answered my prayers for my relationship with my sister to be mended. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful, Brian? Yes, praise Jesus. And, and also, Nellis, I want to thank you because Nellis said uh, to the prayer team, thank you for praying for my daughter, Sarah. She's doing really well. Well, big high five on you there, Nellis. We, we thank God that Sandra's doing great. Well, you know, Brian, we cannot do this without our viewers. And, and viewers, I'm telling you this with all of my heart, that without you, we, it's impossible for us to share the good news. So if you haven't partnered yet financially, it can be as $20 a month to be a monthly partner, or you can give a one-time gift of any size, and we'll send you hope and courage. It will help you today. So pick up the phone, one 855 700 We really need you to stand with us in this time. Please call us so we can send you this wonderful gift. And if on the way out, you're feeling, I, I'm still feeling a bit alone. I want you to understand that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we want to pray. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would manifest even now in such a tangible way that there would be undeniably clear evidence that you are with your child. I pray your peace. I pray now even a certainty, Lord, in uncertain times, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a wonderful uh, verse to close with today from Psalm 73, verses 23 and 24. It says, I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will take me into glory. Hold on to that. Until next time, God bless. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.